life after Miss Universe, I mean, is it a bit of a whirlwind come down? I mean, how does it how does it feel? I wouldn't describe it as a whirlwind come down, but there was definitely a week or two where I decided to sort of hold myself up in my room and not speak to anyone and live in track pants and not do anything of any value whatsoever. Uh, so I think you do need a little bit of, of downtime to sort of just, you know, be yourself for a minute. Um, but I'm really excited to, to move forward with my med studies. Uh, yeah, so I am a tutor with Embrace Education. Uh, Embrace is a volunteer group uh, run out of Monash University and a few other places. Uh, and we run homework clubs, individual tutoring uh, for children from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, mainly migrant and refugee students. So these are kids that go to school and they get their homework but they might not be able to go home uh, to their parents and ask them. And I was very lucky, I was able to go home after school and ask mum or dad if I had questions. Uh, but these kids may not be in that position, they may have parents that don't speak English and so they can't help them with their homework because it's not in their language. They may have parents that haven't been educated themselves. And so we sort of go in after school and we give them a hand, we um, hone their English skills and just help give them a leg up uh, to really enjoy school and, and to be motivated to continue their education. Um, look, I have to say, Olivia, I, I was one of those people, you know, who said, oh, I think um, beauty pageants, why are we focusing on beauty pageants? It, you know, why are we focusing on things women can't have control over? Are we making other women feel bad? I'm sure you get these sort of comments all the time. I do, I do get them all the time, especially in relation to, you know, why do you have to be seen strutting on stage in a bikini? Um, and yeah, you know what, I don't know whether there's really that big a point to it other than, you know, how does your body look? Mm -hmm. But that is something that you come to accept if you enter the pageant. And you have the choice to enter or not enter or to do a pageant that doesn't have a bikini portion. Um, but the other thing to remember is when I um, entered Miss Universe Australia, there's also an interview portion. So the first thing you're judged on um, to get through to top 10 in the national final is actually interview only. And you're fully clothed and you're sitting in front of a panel just having a good old chat. You're going to become a surgeon. Um, we know that there are obstacles that, that can stand in the way. Um, how do you feel about forging ahead in, let's face it, a male-dominated field? Yeah, it's true. and. There are very few female surgeons and that's, you know, compar compared to men. But that's also partly because of the amount of time it takes and you do have to think about certain things, you know, um, raising a family. So if you're only going to be 30 when you're fully qualified, where does that leave time to, to settle into a career and then have kids? Because ultimately it's a biological thing. You know, you do have to take some time off, I get the, I let get alone the, the emotional aspect of it. I get the feeling you'll be advocating for shared, uh, shared training and shared job positions. <laughs> <laughs> yes.